organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Coming up on Daily Iowa TV, murder trial continues. The Justin Marshall trial resumed Thursday after a snow day. Antelope Library, find out about a new service set to start this summer in Iowa, in Iowa City, which has nothing to do with the animal. And in sport, Penn State invades Iowa City, and we'll get you ready for this weekend's matchups. That's all coming your way next. Daily Iowa TV starts now. I'm Tom Brokaw. For more than 100 years now, the University of Iowa community has been waking up to the Daily Iowa. Today, it's the largest newsroom in eastern Iowa. And now you can see the news every night on Daily Iowan TV and get it anytime worldwide at dailyiowan.com. Good evening and welcome to your Thursday edition of Daily Iowa TV. I'm Rebecca Swads. And I'm Ian Martin. Multiple witnesses testified in the Justin Marshall case today, including the man formerly accused of murdering landlord John Versipt in 2009, the crime Marshall is now accused of. Charles Thompson, whose trial in the case ended in a mistrial, said Marshall came home after the time of the murder and removed his pants and placed them in a Walmart bag. The man who stole $215 million from his company's investors will spend the next 50 years in prison. Russell Wasendorf, the founder of the Cedar Rapids-based Peregrine Financial Group, was sentenced Thursday for the theft and for keeping it a secret for 20 years. His crimes affected about 13,000 of his com cu company's customers. The limited availability of books for low-income families in southeast Iowa City inspired one group of UI graduate students to start their own library. Daily Iowa TV's Stephen Duran tells us more about this community antelope library. In Iowa City, literature seems to be everywhere, and reading has played a large role in shaping the community's culture. But recently, literature access has been limited for families on the southeast side of the town. The Antelope Library is a new nonprofit project started by a group of UI library students looking to promote reading in that part of the town. Leaders hope their new style of library will help reach out to these young children. Um, so the main goal is just to get uh, more books and information into the hands of um, kids and families. Um, you know, lots of studies show that the more kids read, the better they do in school, the bigger their vocabulary is. Having access to the libraries downtown may be difficult for families and young children, so the Antelope Library feels like they should bring the library to them. The University and Iowa City are very interested in this mobile project and are helping to promote the group's fundraising. Along with the city, Cassandra says that the other libraries are supportive of this project as well. Um, and they don't, and they said, if you can get the money, then go for it. So that's what we're working to do. <laughs> wow. Although the Antelope Lending Library will not be the same scale as this, leaders hope that their small library will have a large impact on the community's children. Stephen Duran, Daily Iowan TV. The Antelope Lending Library plans to open to the public this summer and leaders encourage students to get involved in the planning process. And still to come on Daily Iowan TV, a look at last minute fundraising efforts by some dance marathoners the day before the big event. And in sports, Mosan Basabi is back. Our sports staff breaks down the rise of one of the Big Ten's most intriguing players. But first, we're throwing it over to Nick Safransky for a look, look, for a look at the local weather report. Is there any chance for a warm Friday, Nick? Thanks, Rebecca. Well, as I'm all sure, you all noticed that the weather today was so cold it should be illegal, and it looks like tomorrow will be more of the same. Friday morning's temperatures will be a ridiculous negative 8 degrees. Friday evening's temps will shoot up almost 20 degrees, but will still only reach 10 degrees. Looking into the next few days' forecast, Saturday will warm up to 28 degrees, Sunday will dip down to 25 degrees, and Monday temps will sail to warm 36 degrees. Tuesday and Wednesday will stay in the mid to high 30s. So Ian and Rebecca, don't put away your hats and gloves just yet. The cold is sticking around. Back to you guys. Yeah. Hey, thanks for the advice, Nick. Now let's take a look at what's going on outside of Iowa. The Midwest's winter weather caused a fatal crash in Detroit Thursday morning. 
At least three people are dead, including two children, after a massive pileup on Interstate 75. Approximately 30 vehicles were involved in the deadly crash, which tied up traffic in the southwest part of the city for hours. The Detroit Metropolitan Airport had reported winds over 20 miles per hour and below freezing temperatures at the time of the crash. A British man may have found a small fortune in a sperm whale secretion on a beach. Ken Willman was walking along a beach in North England when his dog relentlessly sniffed a piece of smelly rock. Willman poked at the horrible smelling lump and initially left it on the beach. But after a Google search, the 50-year-old realized the substance was amber gris, a byproduct of sperm whale digestion used in perfumes, spices, and medicines. Willman returned to claim the clump and is now receiving offers for the amber gris equivalent to 68,000 American dollars. And from getting a fortune to giving one away, British soccer star David Beckham signed a short-term deal today with French club Paris Saint-Germain, and Bex has agreed to give all five months of his salary to charity. After leaving the United States' L.A. Galaxy, the 37-year-old signed with PSG through the French season's end in May and will give away his entire game earnings while in Paris. The amount to be donated and which particular charity are both undisclosed, although Beckham has said it will be a children's charity in the French capital. And you know, there really just are so many great things about David Beckham. Absolutely, although I don't know if I could part with that many millions of dollars that easily. Uh, and good guy. <laughs> A lot of great aspects about him. Uh, and, uh, now we'll throw it over to our own Lauren Moss, who's in the Daily Iowa TV Sports Studio, to talk both hardwood and home wrestling. Lauren? Hi guys and welcome back to the Daily Iron TV Sports Studio. A visit from Penn State Wrestling beat reporter Lee Carey later in the show, but for now we turn to hoops, more specifically Hawks junior forward Melson Basabi. And just over a year ago the big man was in the headlines for all the wrong reasons. The black and gold had just finished taking a beating from the Camels, that's right the Camels of Campbell University. Basabi's stat line, more fouls than points. The sophomore slump seems to be a thing of the past lately, however, with the Ford experience a renaissance year under head man Fran McCaffrey. Daily Iron TV basketball reporter Kate Constable explained why it took riding the pine to make this hoop star shine once more. Last season, Mel Basabi was one of the first players on the court, starting in 21 of 35 games. This year, he is first, second, sometimes even the third person off the bench. Yet, he's playing the best basketball of his career in a Hawkeye uniform. With him, it's, it's, it's all energy level. I mean, he is, he is running, he's jumping, he's impacting the game with his athletic power. And that's what we need him to do. And plus, he can score. Through conference play this time last year, Basabi shot 53% from the field and only 45% from the charity stripe. Through the first seven conference games this year, he is shooting 65% from both areas on the floor. Ironically, at this point in Big Ten play both this year and last year, the big guy has tallied 55 points. But what stands out the most is that this season, Basabi is on the floor two fewer minutes, yet is averaging almost two more points per game. He's also taking better care of the ball, with 14 less turnovers this year, making his impact on the floor greater and his time much more effective. And based on the evolution in his game, the thought of Basabi breaking back into the starting lineup is a question that's been on Coach McCaffrey's mind. A lot of times when you look at this, it's not as simple as it may appear. Obviously, he's playing well. So the, you know, the logical conclusion is we'll just put him in the starting lineup. It, it may be the right thing for the team, may not be, because he's playing the best basketball of the last two years coming off the bench. Regardless of his position for the remainder of the season, one thing is for sure. Mel Basabi has made a punch as the most valuable sixth man on this year's Iowa Hawkeyes. Kate Constable, Daily Iowa TV Sports. And the Hoops team is obviously taking on Penn State tonight inside Carver Hawkeye. And the wrestling team will be taking on the Nittany Lions as well tomorrow night. And with that, we welcome Daily Collegian wrestling beat reporter Lee Carey to the program from State College, Pennsylvania. And Lee, big weekend in Iowa City. What's the mood around State College right now, both with the teams and the community? Yeah, um, you know, everyone's, and I know at least from the wrestling point of view, a lot of the guys on the team, you know, they've been circling this day on the calendar, and they really, you know, they really are looking forward to it. Um, you know, it's a matchup that could help grow the sport, and a lot of the guys are talking about how, you know, the rest of the community, you know, one versus three, you know, people want to see 
these top tier teams go go to battle. And a duel like this usually is a pretty good recipe for some featured matchups. What are you looking forward to the most? Um, I'd probably say McDonough Megalutis because um, you know, it was it was a close match in the NCAAs and uh, you know, Nico he's saying that he he hasn't prepared any different way, but at the same time he's uh he's been looking forward to that match ever since he lost. So, um a chance of redemption is always a good storyline, and um, I definitely say that that would be the match I'm looking forward to because you know it's right now it's one versus two at that at that class at that weight class you, you don't get any better than that currently. And Lee, we have to get you out of here on this prediction: blue and white or black and gold? Oof, uh, prediction. Yeah, I think it's going to be really close. Um, I wouldn't be shocked if it was uh, within uh, ten to uh, ten to five points, but um, I think I, I'm going to go with uh, Penn State. All right, thanks for that, Lee. And our own wrestling insider, Cody Goodwin, now joins us on set. And Cody, I know this is an anticipated matchup. What can we expect this weekend? You can expect a lot of close matches and a lot of really great wrestling. Of the 20 wrestlers that are going to step on the mat tomorrow night, 17 of them are ranked in the top 20 nationally. So there's going to be a lot of good wrestlers going, you know, shaking hands, getting ready to wrestle. And um, like Lee said, a good matchup will be Matt McDonough and Nico Megalutis at 125. Another anticipated matchup will be at 157 between our very own Derek St. John, ranked number one, and Dylan Alton, ranked number five for Penn State. And at 165, another anticipated matchup, the up-and-coming rising Nick Moore, who's ranked number 13, and the number two ranked David Taylor. So a lot of good wrestling all around. It's going to be exciting, and you should come join the blackout if you're not doing anything tomorrow night. All right, great. Well, we'll look forward to hearing about that. And with that, it's all for us here in Sports Studio. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Lauren. With Dance Marathon starting tomorrow, some dancers spent this week doing their final fundraising efforts. One of the ways dancers raised money was by going out into the community to, ca to go canning. Canning is a way that dancers can earn the money towards being able to attend the big event, where they will dance for 24 hours straight without sitting down. The money goes to families of children with cancer. I dance um, for Nicole Woldridge. I lost um, my best friend when I was little, and I dance for her. Each dancer needs to raise at least $400 to attend the full 24 hours of the big event. Dance Marathon has raised more than $11 million since it started in 1994. And for an inside look at our Dance Marathon coverage, Daily Iowan TV's Allie Wright is in the newsroom with a Daily Iowan reporter who's going to pull an all-nighter with the dancers at the big event this weekend. Thanks, guys. Well, I'm in the Daily Iowa newsroom with reporter Brianna Jett, who has been covering Dance Marathon all weekend long and will continue to do so during the big event this weekend. So, Brianna, you wrote about Ellie Capaldo, our part participant of the event um, this week. Can you tell me a little bit about her? Um, well, Ellie, she was diagnosed with leukemia when she was about 20 months old, and right now she's gone through about seven months of treatment, and it's looking really promising. So, uh, she is one of the most inspiring little girls that I've met, so I'm really excited and honored to have covered her story. Great. Uh, so I guess what's the biggest thing that you're looking forward to at the big event this weekend? Um, mostly just the excitement that's going to be in that room and being able to cover all of those stories and kind of participate, participate in Dance Marathon in our own way by doing a marathon of stories. Definitely. Well, we'll look forward to your coverage as well as our own. Be sure to stay tuned to DailyIowan.com throughout the weekend, as well as tuning in to Daily Iowan TV on Sunday night for a Daily Iowan, Daily Iowan Dance Marathon special. Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Allie. And only with Daily Iowan TV can you get a sneak peek at tomorrow's edition of the Daily Iowan. Read about how the Board of Regents is proposing to make state universities more transparent. Also, we'll take a closer look at how Iowa City businesses will accommodate the city's Blue Zone designation. And that's your latest edition of Daily Iowan TV, but check us out anytime at dailyiowan.com. Thanks for watching and have a great night.